How's it going everybody? My name is Spencer Ingleke. I'm the local mission leader here at ACF and I get to speak to you guys today about something that's near and dear to my heart and that's the story of Mephibosheth. And a lot of you guys are probably like, who is Mephibosheth? Is that a food? Is that a language? Is that a person? Well, it's actually a person that we find in the Old Testament. And it's an amazing story. It's like I, I, would, I would kind of equate it to a gem that you find when you're going out for a treasure hunt. It, it's something that's hidden a little bit in First and Second Samuel, but something that is just truly, truly life-giving and life-altering. So let's jump into it. It is Second Samuel 9, if you want to follow along in your Bible. And how it starts and says, And David said, Is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him the kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, before we jump into it, we need to know these three characters in order to really understand the story. So you have David. King of Israel at this point. He's the one who slayed Goliath. He's the famous one, man after God's own heart. He fathered Solomon, another major king of Israel. So we know who David is. Saul was actually the first king of Israel, and he was being he actually was usurped by David from God's anointing. And so we see David was the one who usurped Saul. David's the second king of Israel, first is Saul's the first one. And then Jonathan is actually Saul's son who became great friends with David, served alongside battles with him, and David and him were the greatest of friends. And so David, David here is asking, is there anyone in Saul's family? And the first thing one would think about when they read this is if a king is asking for another king's family, a deceased king's family, that was for the current king to kind of wipe out and eliminate the rest of the old king's family. So there's no rebellion, there's no, there's no political figure for them to be kind of the people to be drawn behind just in case if there was a, a little bit of rupture in David's reign. But what's crazy is that's not what David is, is asking for. He says, is there anyone in Saul's family that I may show him the kindness for Jonathan's sake. So the first thing that we really have to understand when we're, we're, we're unraveling the story is that David is showing kindness to Saul's family, something that is undeserving because of what Jonathan did for David, because of their relationship, because of Jonathan's help in David's life. And it continues on in verse 2, and it says, Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and they called to him to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, I am your servant. And the king said, Is there still not someone of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God to him? Ziba said to the king, There is a son of Jonathan. He is a cripple in the feet. The king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, He is in the house of Maker, the son of Amonel, at Lodabar. Then David the king sent and brought forth from the house of Mekar the son of Amel at Lodabar. So what's going on in this section is David is asking who, who, where is somebody in the lineage of Saul? And finally an old servant of Saul, Ziba, comes to him and is like David saying, hey is there anybody? And Ziba says something very interesting. He says there is a, but one son of Saul left. And he is hiding out in Machir, um, the son of Amal at Lodabar. Lodabar is a deserted place on the outskirts of Jerusalem. This, this, this son has hidden, has ran away from Israel and now is in isolation hiding. And he mentions he's also a cripple in the feet. You see, in this time in antiquity, if you're a cripple, you're not, a se you're not only a second-class citizen, you're, you're the lowest of the low. They think the Lord, or even if it was in pagans, the gods have somehow done something to deserve this punishment, like you are a terrible person. Like That is kind of the personification that happens with people that are crippled. And so this, this person that we're speaking of, the person that David is trying to bring in, is the son of David's ultimate enemy, 
He is hiding, deserted, in social isolation, and then he is crippled at the feet. This is somebody that has been wrecked upon, and life has came and just spat in his face. And David says, bring him here. And Mephibosheth, that is the name of the person of Jonathan's son, the person that we're just talking about. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and paid homage. And David said, Mephibosheth, answered, Behold, I am your servant. And David said, Do not fear, for I will show you the kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I restore to you all the land that there saw your father, and you shall eat at my table always. And he paid homage, and Mephibosheth said, What is your servant that you should show regard for a dead dog such as I? Mephibosheth is walking up to David thinking, He is going to kill me, I'm going to be executed. And David says, No, 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 I am going to clothe you, I'm going to feed you, I'm going to seat you at my table, which is the greatest honor of anybody in the nation of Israel, to sit at the king's table. And I'm going to restore to you every single thing that your father Saul gave to you. You see, we're, we're called to be David's church. We're called to take the blessings that the Lord has provided for us and go out and seek, not have Mephibosheth come to us. You see, David sought after Mephibosheth and find those that are hurting, that are ran, that are self-isolating, and say to them, come, let me show you the love of God. Let me show you the kindness of the Lord. And what's amazing of what David did is, is not only did he meet Mephibosheth's physical needs, but he also said, you, you, you look at yourself as a dog, but you're going to sit at my table and I'm going to be in relationship with you. I'm going to be in partnership with you. I am not somebody that's above you. We are equals. Let us sit together and eat. So we're not called to just fix all the conditional and the material things. We're called to go out and love and to say, look, I see you, you're valued and cared for. Because that's what Jesus did. He didn't only fix the condition, he, he made sure the person felt valued. So church, that's, that's my devotion today, and that's my plea, and that's my challenge to you. Go out and seek the Mephibosheths of this world and show them the kindness of God, not only through material gifting, but coming in community and showing them that they are valued.